Um, basically, I'm bored. <laughs> You've been very, very harsh. Nice. That doesn't happen with this shit. And this book is making me feel alive. <laughs> hey cuties. I don't know, I'm so excited for this video. Come on, this isn't a very good um, start to a vlog. <laughs> It's a mess. I'm not very profesh, but I am so excited for this vlog. We're reading Murder Mysteries for a week. Just bathe in that for a second with me. Just bathe in it. <laughs> murder Mysteries are my favourite genre. I love a classic murder mystery. Oh, you just you just can't you just can't top them. I just love them. So we're going to be reading them for a week. I'm so excited. This requires no introduction. This is what I've been waiting for. Spooky season. Ookie kooky season. We're here. First we have got Dead Dead Girls by Nikiza Afia. I'm gonna start with this one. It's set in 1920s Harlem. Black women are going missing and our protagonist decides to investigate it. I am just so excited. This has been one of my most anticipated releases of this year to get to and I'm so excited that I'm finally going to read it. Another one of my most anticipated releases of 2021 is Marion Lane and the Midnight Murder by T.A. Wilberg. I bought this as a reward for finishing a piece of uni work back when I was still at uni and suffering. It's set in 1950s London I think yeah 1950s London and there's this like company of detectives that our protagonist is a part of and there's this labyrinth of underground tunnels in London that they use to do their work and I think it's also a locked room murder mystery this one in particular like the case that she's covering and then there's a murder mystery I really want to read like I really want to read it in this video but the problem is if you watched recently I did a video <laughs> shaming myself for all the series I'm currently reading these are two new series Neither of the second books in this series are out yet, but this, these are both going to be a series, a detective series. The other book I really want to read is another series. <laughs> it's the start of another series, but I think I'm just going to let myself do it because I've wanted to read this for so long. You naughty naughty, you teasing me, you naughty naughty. <laughs> And it is The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. This is like one of the most successful books in the UK of the past couple of years. Like it has topped the charts on everything. Topped the charts on hardback, then it came out in paperback and it's been top of the chart of that for like 22 weeks or something ridiculous. So I was You're that girl, I knew you were. So I am so excited to read this. This is set in like a quaint English village. We have four friends who are older characters. They are retired, which I think is really fun because often, you know, books we read are young characters. So I'm excited to read like about older characters and this has just been so widely acclaimed that I'm excited to see if Richard Osman's stuff is for me because he's a very famous TV presenter in the UK. And I'm gonna go start Dead Dead Girls. I'm actually about to go out to Epping Forest. It's Tom's birthday, my boyfriend's birthday, um, the next couple of days. So we're doing some stuff for his birthday and we're gonna go for this lovely walk in Epping Forest now. So I'm gonna go to that and I'm gonna go start Dead Dead Girls in the car. And I, I don't know what to expect, but I am very excited. I need to <laughs> I need to go wash my hair but I um I've already read quite a lot of the book and I want to go read the book in the bath so we have to chat we have to speak I am halfway through dead dead girls I'm on page <laughs> and you guys I am loving this I cannot tell you how easy reading murder mysteries comes to me. It's just my natural state now. Like, I don't think I'll ever struggle to read a murder mystery. You know, sometimes with the fantasy I'm reading or romance or anything, I'm like, oh, it's a bit of a struggle to read. Like, uh, that doesn't happen with this shit. Sorry, I just kissed my cat and now I just have got fur all over my face. Like, and I can feel it all over me. Anyway, so in this, basically we're following Louise in 1926 Harlem and these young black girls are being murdered. They all kind of work at the same club and she, through these circumstances, basically has to team up with the police to kind of help them with their investigation. It's kind of just a simple historical mystery. I wouldn't say it's like out here, the sun just said no. I wouldn't say it's out here like, you know, groundbreaking, but I don't want mysteries to do that. I've said it a million times. I want simple mysteries. I am really loving the writing. The fact that this is the debut, ah, 
oh, I am shocked. Like it is an amazing debut in terms of the writing. It just keeps me reading. It's so compulsively readable. It's so easy to read. I think that it is so vividly set in 1920s New York. I think like the the setting is so deep and there's so many little quirks to what the characters do or how they speak or how they act that really puts you in that time period so I'm loving that aspect of it. Louise is a very um, interesting heroine because she's kind of got a past that she doesn't want to be recognized for anymore. She We find out right at the beginning that she got kidnapped and saved her and three other girls lives by like killing the man essentially who had kidnapped them. So she's kind of got a lot of interesting elements to her that I think are being well developed alongside the mystery. That is my favourite kind of murder mystery. Like look at A Good Girl's Guide to Murder where she has a storyline throughout the series as well as the mysteries. The one thing I would say is this ain't a cosy mystery. I've said that before. You kind of look at the cover and you think, oh, cosy mystery vibes. And there's elements of it that remind me of cosy mysteries and kind of the simpleness of it and the vibes, but we are dealing with a lot of heavy topics. And I feel like we've only just, there's hair, there's fur in my eye. Ew. I feel like we're only beginning to scratch the surface on those heavy topics and it's just gonna get even more so. We've already got trigger warnings for like rape and sexual assault just in this first half and I feel like it's gonna become a lot more. But on the whole, I'm really, really loving it. It's such an enjoyable, interesting reading experience and this isn't letting me down. This is one of my most anticipated like new releases of this year. I've been so excited to get to this. It's kind of been one of the books I've been most excited to own and now to read and it's really not disappointing. This is going to be a four or five star, I think. Uh, you know, it's going to be one of those two. I finished Dead Dead Girls last night. I read pretty much all of this in a day, if I'm honest. This is such a quick, easy, enjoyable read. So if you're looking for like a quick mystery that is really immersive, you'll be really kind of on the edge of your seat. This is what I would recommend. I'm going to give it four stars. I loved the experience of reading it. I had a lot of fun. It's just like a fun simple kind of mystery with a lot of really great characters, a really great hero her heroine, 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 heroine. Ah! I'm getting older. I, I don't know if I can, if I want all this drama all the time, if I'm being honest. The problem at the end for me was the pacing is off at the end. The ending is kind of drawn out, kind of drawn out, kind of drawn out, not much happening. Everything happens in two pages right at the, like right, right, right at the end. And so, hang on. We're looking, we're cutting off half my head. The actual ending only happens in two pages. I feel like there could have been a lot better of an ending, but it's a debut and I think it's a great debut. I really, really loved it. I think our main character is so interesting. I'm so excited for this to become a series. The next one is coming out, I think in summer time next year. I'll put the thumbnail here. The thumbnail, I'll put the cover here. <laughs> I didn't predict who the murderer was. I thought it was someone else entirely, or I thought the person who it ended up being was working with this other character, who I thought it really was this other character, but I was wrong. It wasn't, it wasn't them. They were, they were trustworthy. It's talking about real issues of how young black women were viewed in this time, the attitudes towards them and how difficult it was to be a young black woman in this time, all interwoven in this mystery was absolutely wonderful. I thought the writing was amazing. I really, really enjoyed it. I think it's a great, solid mystery. And I just love reading mysteries. I love reading murder mysteries. I'm, I cannot tell you how happy I am to be reading a murder mystery. Like, I just love it. It's just, it just comes innately to me. <laughs> it reduces stress. It alleviates depression. I was going to read Marion Lane and the Midnight Murder again, but I realised they're quite similar in the fact that they're only set like 30 years apart. It's a young woman detective um, solving a murder. So I thought they'd be quite similar. So I'm actually gonna read The Thursday Murder Club next, which I'm excited for. I mean, this is like one of the most successful books in the UK. I'm not sure if its success has quite translated to like America and Canada and overseas, but in the UK, this is like one of the top selling books. So I'm very excited to go and give it a read. These four unlikely friends meet up once a week to investigate unsolved murders and then a brutal killing takes place on their doorstep. It sounds so interesting. It's been so positively received. I am very, very excited. We are just going to pop out today to Lakeside, which is like a shopping centre place near me. I need to get some new furniture and stuff for my room and we're going to go get some clothes. It's going to be loads of fun. So I'll take you with me and I'm going to read this in the car on the way there. Besties, this book is so good. Can we talk about the steak? <laughs> 
The steak is the only thing I filmed yesterday. Nothing else is important, but oh my god. I have been waiting for a Miller and Carter steak for a long time. And let me tell you, that moment, I want to relive it. Like, I keep thinking about it. I'm like, I did not appreciate that steak enough. Sorry, this is incredible. But anyway, I'm 100 pages into the Thursday Murder Club and I'm loving it. I'm loving it. It's so good. So I think I explained already, we're basically following four friends who have this murder club at their retirement village where they investigate cold cases, but then a murder happens on their doorstep, kind of within the community of the retirement village. They're just starting to kind of investigate it. We've got some super interesting characters. And most of all, I love the way it's written. It's written in this very comedic tone of voice. You know, it's funny. It's a funny book, but it's very British humor. And that's why I don't think, I mean, <laughs> I don't know the stats. It may have done very well in America, but just from my feelings, like I haven't really heard anyone from America speak about it, but it has the UK in a chokehold. Like I'm pretty sure now every household in the UK must own a copy of this book for how much it's been on the bestseller charts. The way our characters act is very like, you know, making fun at whilst also paying homage to like the way kind of older people, <laughs> like our grandparents act in the UK. And it, yeah, just very British humor. So I feel like perhaps that's why it hasn't translated to the US as well, again, this is just my, my, you know, instinct. I don't know the statistics on how well it's done over there or internationally, but it doesn't matter how it does internationally because it has the UK in a chokehold. Richard Osman has said, Here's a fucking mystery, bitches. I'm finding you quite aggressive now, actually, to yeah. be honest. I feel like it's a masterclass in character storytelling so far. The way we're kind of getting to know our four main characters and their friendship and their kind of relationships, particularly Elizabeth and Joyce, the women, rule. They're fucking icons. They're fucking legends. I love them. I'm really enjoying this book. Oh my god. It, the way it's just told, I love funny comedic books. I've always said, when I write a book, it's coming ladies and gentlemen, it's coming in about 20 years. Delusion. <laughs> Convince yourself. I'd want it to have this kind of like overseeing, dramatic, comedic narrator, and that's kind of what this has. It's kind of what this has. It's got a very funny narrator to it, like a general overseeing kind of narrator. There's definitely a lot of humor there, and that's what I love to read. I just, I just, I'm very happy. So it's currently, I think about half five maybe, and I'm gonna try and finish this tonight. Don't know how I'm gonna do it, I'm quite tired. <laughs> I'm quite sleepy, but I'm, I want to try and read the whole thing tonight. So I've got about 270 pages left. So I'm going to read another 135 to page 235. And then I'm going to check in with you is my goal. And then I can take all my makeup off and like be like a slob. But I want to read another 135 pages and then we'll chat again. But I am very much enjoying this so far. talking to you. Fuck off. I don't want to be here. I want to be downstairs reading my book. I want to be downstairs reading my book. You guys! It's gonna be five stars. I'm predicting it now. It's gonna be maybe, maybe, if, whoa, if we pull it off, maybe 
one of, if not the favourite book of the year so far. No, that's, listen, favourite book of the year, I feel like, takes a bit of time to simmer out and adjust. You can't say after, I'm not going to even, I'm not going to make that declaration in this video. You can't say even in like the five days after you finished a book, if it's your favourite book of the year. It requires a bit of thought and a bit of evaluation, but needless to say, I'm loving it. I actually... When was the last time I took a breath in that? Whoa, okay. <laughs> it's so good. The mystery is amazing. Plot twist turns. I love our group. I love their investigation. I love how sneaky and cheeky and fun they are. It's look at age and mortality and yeah, your perception of self as you age. Inter I, it's so interesting. We never, books are always about young people. <laughs> Pretty much books are about young people and I really appreciate this being about elderly people living in a retirement village having fun and like solving a murder mystery being what gets them alive. I just literally fuck off, I don't want to talk to you. Don't be don't fucking do rude. Are you kidding me? We just had a little plot twist, little, just a little spicy one, not a major one, but a little like that really shocked me that I really wasn't expecting. I feel like I'm talking like that woman on... <laughs> I don't even have TikTok. Well, I do, but I don't use it. But the one on TikTok who's like, so, I'm losing my mind. The one who speeds her voice up and she'll do like parents or teachers. So today, we do, 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 do. that one. <laughs> this book is just so good. I, why don't I read more murder mysteries? Why don't I read more mess? Why do I not just read mysteries? Well, I tell you why. It's because not a lot come out. Like, why is mystery a dead genre in many ways? Why are so many mysteries categorised as thrillers? Tell me. It's not fair! I don't get it! Tell me! And this book is making me feel alive! <laughs> and I feel like I save my mysteries. Like, I have some mysteries, as we've been talking about. I have The Appeal, I have Firekeeper's Daughter, I have The Dinner Guest, I have In the Hall with a Knife, I have, you know, I have a lot of mysteries on my TBR, but there's no loads of them, so I save them and I sprinkle them in. Because, you know, if I read them all now, then I wouldn't have any mysteries to read for a while, or that I was interested in. I was saying this the other day on Twitter, if there's, actually I was saying it today <laughs> on Twitter, <laughs> if there's ever any new release mysteries, mysteries, mysteries coming out, let me know. Just let me know. Never let me go not knowing about a new release mystery. They're so hard, I feel like. Maybe they're not, but they're so hard to find. And then there's some books, there's some books that are thrillers, there's some books that are mysteries, and there's some that are like halfway in between, which I do like, but I love a good mystery. I love a good mystery. I'm gonna go finish it and I'll probably talk to you in the morning because <laughs> it is like nine o'clock and it's gonna take me a couple hours probably to finish it, but it does read very fast. So. Yeah. <laughs>I'm still in my loungewear because I'm feeling a bit delicate today. <laughs> but I finished this this morning, read the last 50 pages this morning. So I did read a lot last night. This is such a quick read. And you guys, five stars, five stars. You're simply the best. I loved this. This is one of my new favourite mysteries, I think this is such an amazing book. There were so many twists and turns at the end, like I was being, oh, 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 I kept being led to think it was someone else and it just like, I never figured it out. Right up to the end with the final killer reveal, because there's like a few mysteries in this book, it really led me to think it was someone else right at the end, like intentionally, and I was like, oh shit, we are fucked. But then it wasn't, it was someone else and it was just, you know, I cried again. <laughs>
And I think that's a sign of a great mystery that can, it can have you feeling so many different emotions. Like I don't usually cry at mysteries, but this is a tearjerker. So if you do read it, be prepared to cry. Be prepared to like be so sad. I mean, listen, I do cry easily. We all know this, but it really, it got me. It got me twice. Like pages apart, I'd calm down and then it made me cry again. The one thing I will say is, you know, this isn't just me being like, oh, I'm British. I'm from the UK. To me, I feel like the humor in this is so British, English, UK, United Kingdom, me and uh, <laughs> that I generally don't know how it would perform for you, like in terms of the humor, which makes up a massive part of this book. If you are international, I mean, like authors have done this before. I don't think it's a big problem, but with books where I feel like they're very like British, and not just set in the UK, but like they have British culture steeped into them. I feel the need to like warn people because like, I don't know how much of it is transferable for everyone else because I'm the target market. Do you know what I mean? So I can't remove myself from it. But again, I loved following, you know, older elderly characters. I think they're a bit of a forgotten part of society in our fiction. We always read about young-ish people, I feel like. And reading about these elderly characters and the way that it spoke about mortality and life and your perspective of life when, you know, you know that death is, is kind of just around the corner for you was so interesting. And I love the kind of freedom that it gave the characters. They're so cheeky they're so fun and um, I just absolutely loved it. It was such a joyous reading experience. I was just like totally captivated throughout the whole reading experience. I read it really fast. I mean like you know it's not a long book but I literally read it pretty much all last night. So yeah I would super recommend this. One of my favorite mysteries ever now. It's got a very like you know it's pride of place like it's so good. But now now it's a uh, it's Saturday. It's Saturday. It's Saturday. <laughs> And you're going home, sweetie. And who do you think you are? I need to, this video goes up tomorrow night, Sunday night. I need to obviously read the last book, <laughs> Marion Lane and the Midnight Murder. And I need to edit what I have of this video so far. And me and Tom are rearranging my whole room this weekend. When I say me and Tom, he's gonna do it. I'm just gonna think about what needs to be done. <laughs> So I'm going to go away and I'm going to start editing this video for a couple hours and then kind of this afternoon, evening time, I will start Marion Lane and the Midnight Murder. It's not very long, it's only just over 300 pages. Again, this is one set in 1950s in London and we have this girl who's part of this like private detective group, I think, so I'm super excited. This is another one of kind of my most anticipated releases of this year. I'm really treating myself this week, what can I say? So I'm gonna go start editing the video and I'll catch up with you once I'm probably about halfway through this. Okay, besties, I'm gonna keep it short and sweet because Miko's here and he's so happy. <laughs> We've just spent like 40 minutes cuddling and then this is gonna wake him up and I feel bad, but I have to speak to you. Um, Basically, I'm bored. <laughs> You've been very, very harsh. Nice to meet you, Kelly. Kelly Arsh. I'm halfway through. By the way, my room is so echoey because there's no furniture in here, like apart from my bed. Because no, no, don't get up. No, I'm so sorry. Oh my god, we've been best friends. I'm halfway through, and I feel like nothing has happened. Like nothing has happened. Like we're only really just getting into the real mystery. Like the real crux of the story. It feels like a smaller idea for a mystery that is kind of being stretched out and I don't appreciate that. I was hoping we were going to have fucking home runs, like home run after home run after home run pretty much in this video but I don't think that's going to be the case. I'm kind of having to force myself through it. It's not it's not my favorite book and I'm very upset because I was so excited to read it. I love the cover. I'm pretty sure this is in a five star prediction. <laughs> I want to cry. Yeah, it's, it's an okay read. Like, it's an okay mystery, but I don't feel like the characters are very distinct. We've got, like, a lot of different characters, and I don't feel like they're very distinct from one another, which I feel like the other two mysteries really had. Also, it's reminding me a lot of Amari and the Night Brothers, actually, because that is, like, a magical school, like, apprentice school, middle grade. But this one is these private detectives basically living underground in London, like uh, in these hidden tunnels underneath London. But our main character is an apprentice, so it's kind of got that school vibe. Like she kind of gets like a timetable every day and she has assignments. So it's kind of got a school vibe and it's kind of magical as well. Like this is like 
semi-fantastical mystery. But I just feel like Amara and Light Brothers like fulfills what I want better. Like, I don't know. But I feel like if you liked Amara and Light Brothers, you might like the vibes of this. Also, finally, final point before I go to sleep because I'm very tired. Every day I wake up. I don't feel like it's very rooted in its time period. It's set in the 1950s and in comparison to Dead Dead Girls, which was set in the 1920s, and it, you just felt it, like you felt the 20s. Granted, I feel like the 20s are a easier period to conjure up emote, like, you know, visuals of, but like this could be set 80s, <laughs> 90s. Like, I don't feel like there's anything that, that makes me feel like I'm in the 50s which is what I want. If you're gonna do historical, what's the point of doing historical if it reads like it pretty much could be modern? So anyway, I'm just gonna go finish the book because I'm not having the best experience reading it, but I just wanna get it read. Besties, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I had to really force myself through it. This is another one of my most like disappointing books of the year. Because it's another one of my most anticipated books and it's another one of my most disappointing. Um, what a sad little life, Jane. It just felt so bland to me, personally, personally, personal opinion, it's personal opinion. I feel like this book didn't really figure out what it wanted to be, if it wanted to be an alternate history, more of a mystery, because I feel like the mystery element was actually very weak. And here's the thing, I want to write a fantasy mystery in the future, but it's very, very, very hard to do well, because in a normal mystery, everything we know is constrained by normality. But when you and enter in magical things, suddenly the constraints and the boundaries of what is possible are so much wider, like so much more is possible. So it's so hard to keep a lid on who it could have been, how it could have been done so that it feels satisfying to the reader. An example of something that I feel like it does it well is something like Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo. I think she's very good at that. But I think it's hard to do, and I think this book struggled with that kind of element. I think it is very hard to do all of those genres as well. Historical, mystery, fantasy, that is my favourite combination of genres. It's a genre that I want to write in the future, but I think it's so hard to do it well. I think, in a way, you are setting yourself up for failure. I mean, I can just accept that I'm setting myself up for failure, but... Hey ho. I think I'm gonna give it two stars. The same problem persisted as well for me with the characters. Like, I could not tell these characters apart. Like, I literally don't know who these people were. <laughs> like, they all blurred into one. And maybe the problem is, is I'd read two very strong mysteries before this, a four star and a five star, mysteries I'd really enjoyed. So then maybe I would have enjoyed this more had I not come off the back of that. So that is something to take into consideration as well. But yeah, I, really did not love this. I'm very disappointed. I'm very, very sad. I love the addition. Like it was one of my favorite kind of looking mysteries. I loved the way it looked. Um, and I'm fucking devastated. <laughs> we had a mix in this vlog. We had a four star and a five star books. I really, really enjoyed. And then this to end it all. And I don't think I've really spoken about it much because I haven't wanted to. Like it's been a bit of a blur. I've just kind of forced myself through it since last night. Like I literally read it again just last night and this morning. So that's where we're gonna end it. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I love reading murder mysteries. I love finally getting some of them ticked off my list. So I hope you enjoyed it too. If you got into the end of this video, comment the lock, like padlock emoji. Um, comment it down below if you've gotten to the end of this video. And I love you very much. Thank you for all of your support. And yeah, I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.